It has been a turbulent week in Somalia. A week ago, al-Shabaab terrorists seized control of the Hyatt Hotel. The attack ended with 21 civilians dead, over 100 injured, and at least four militants killed. Not only the military side and the ideological war side, but also the Somali government's opening the doors for those who wanted to come back from al-Shabaab, and many of them has already come back. The al-Shabaab appear to be responding to recent actions by President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud. He appointed their former number two commander, Mukhtar Robau, as Minister of Religious Affairs, and he declared that he would fight them ideologically and eventually enter into negotiations. For the group, this required a response, one that would show that they don't intend to speak with Robau and that they reject the idea of negotiations. This is also likely to be spurred on by the assassination of al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri by the United States. Al-Qaeda founded al-Shabaab. While they don't control the day-to-day -day functions of the group, they are in contact with their fellow militants. Both al-Qaeda and al-Shabaab have reasons to show that they can inflict pain on the Somali government and its international partners. Hitting a hotel in the capital city is a very high-profile strike. Expect more of the same, as al-Shabaab has been very active recently. Their invasion of Ethiopia should have security forces in Kenya and Djibouti worried as well. There is no telling where the terrorists will strike next. There are reports that a feud is brewing between Puntland President Saeed Deni and Somalia President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud. Analysts say that presidential appointments and cabinet choices have the state leader upset. There has also been a report that Southwest State President Abdiaziz Loftagarin has made a clandestine visit to Ethiopia. Loftagarin State is not well represented in the cabinet in the opinion of many. Neither of these developments should surprise anyone. All of the state leaders are likely to test boundaries with the new federal president in the early months of his regime. Mohamud's response to such challenges will be telling. He may decide to freeze certain leaders out, find common ground with them, or take action to satisfy their complaints. The previous president tried to install his own choices in the various state houses, succeeding in three. Whether the current leader will try and be a strongman or a consensus builder remains to be seen. ADN-TV will continue to report on political and security developments in Somalia.